Hello everyone it's been a while but I'm here with another video. This is, What if Issei leaves Rias Grimori's peerage? The author of this fanfiction has given me permission and I've been dying to get started on making videos again. So let's get the part 1 started. Chapter 1 Heartbreak Issei, to you, what am I? Who am I? Asked Rias, her back to Issei. Um, to me president is president. Said Issei slightly confused. Idiot, cried Rias, he voiced sounding as though she was crying, a sob escaping her throat. Rias rushed out of the clubroom. Asia rushed to the door, but paused to look back at Issei. Issei, you are horrible. It's too much. Why can't you, why can't you understand Rias' feelings? Questioned Asia, tears in her eyes, confusing Issei, before she went after Rias. That wasn't right Issei said Yudo with a sigh. And not right as in what? Asked Issei in confusion. That, exactly that, you, I can understand very well what the girls are going through. Said Yudo, sounding exasperated. Exactly. It is natural for Rias in Asia to get mad. Scolded Akino, sounding angry as well. Even I, who is dense at these sorts of things, thought you were a bit off, Issei. Chimed in Zenovia. Mo, Issei, sure is a no-no. Poor Rias, added Irina, sounding mad as well. You are the worst, said Kaneko as a cold voice. Issei, meanwhile, was utterly confused and had no idea why everyone was looking at him in such disappointment and anger. I don't get it, what did I do? Thought Issei, before turning to Gasper. Hey Gasper, am I really bad here? Asked Issei desperately. Gasper seemed somewhat uncomfortable, but answered nonetheless. Um, yes, I think you are very bad. Said Gasper timidly, causing Issei to drop to his knees. Um, this is the fault of my mother and I, right? I'm sorry, said Ravel, getting Issei to look at her strangely. How is this Ravel's fault? Questioned Issei. Akino walked over to Ravel and placed her hands on her shoulders. This isn't your fault Ravel. Issei is most at fault here because he never tried to think about the crucial thing, between Rias and himself until now. Said Akino kindly, causing Ravel to perk up. The atmosphere was so tense, Issei couldn't take it and abruptly left the room, getting some surprised expressions from those in the clubroom. Do you think he will go to Rias and make things right? Asked Yudo curiously. I hope so. Rias looked crushed. Said Akino. I just don't understand why Issei keeps acting like this. Said Zenovia with a sigh. Hopefully, Issei Senpei will fix everything. Said Gasper hopefully. Line break. I don't understand. Why was everyone so angry with me? What did I do? Thought Issei, as he clenched his fist. I can't take this anymore. This sense of unknowing. Not knowing if President loves me or not if all the girls love me or not, or if, thought Issei, before a face flashed in his mind. Will you die for me? Issei clenched his chest as he entered his house, both his parents were out shopping. Their new house required lots of supplies after all. Issei chuckled dryly, is that all I was to them, the prized red dragon emperor, someone to show off in front of others but never be honest with. Thought Issei, the pain of that very thought, caused him to scrunch his eyes up. Well no more, I know it wasn't the best idea, to continue to be such an open pervert. I love boobs so much, but it seems none of them take me seriously because of it. Thought Issei, remembering the verbal assault he had just taken, as he entered his room. No more, I can't do this anymore, shouted Issei internally, as he started to cry. The sense of not knowing, the sense of fear, that feeling of uncertainty. Thought Issei, as he closed his eyes shut tightly. Will you die for me? No more, whispered Issei, as he quickly packed a backpack with all he needed from his room, before heading down to the kitchen. No more, muttered Issei sadly, as he grabbed enough food to last him for a few weeks. No more, said Issei, as he closed the door behind him and dropped his key on the mat. No more shouted Issei, 
as a red glow suddenly encompassed his being and a magic circle appeared under him. A massive amount of energy burst from Issei's form, so strong, that everyone in Kuo felt it, even those who were not magically aware. Will you die for me? RRRRAGGGGGGHHRHRHRH ha 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 roared Issei in agony, before he vanished in a burst of red energy. Line break. Um, Kiba Senpei, said Gasper timidly, sometime after Issei had left the clubroom. Hum, what is it Gasper? asked Yudo. Do you, I mean, was it fair for all of us to gang up on Issei Senpei like that? asked Gasper. What do you mean, Gasper? We didn't gang up on him, replied Yudo. Well, I mean, he did seem to be really confused. Added Ravel timidly. Hum, you have a point, Issei did seem to be genuinely confused, but why? Added Zenovia. Do you, do you think we were a bit too hard on him? Asked Irina. Well, Issei needs to understand how Rias feels, it is important to all of us as well. If Issei can't admit his feelings to Rias, then how is he, oh no? Said Akino, suddenly coming to a realization. What is it Akino? Asked Yudo curiously. Issei couldn't admit his feelings to Rias. That was it, shouted Akino in realization. What do you mean? Asked Irina, the last person Issei admitted his feelings to, said Akino, as a look of shock appeared on her face. Rainier, said Kaneko suddenly, as her eyes widened. Yuto's eyes widened at this. Of course, how could we forget? Shouted Kiba in horror. Um what do you mean? Who is Rainier? Asked Irina curiously. Issei's first and only girlfriend, one who he confessed his love to, but, she was a fallen angel and she killed him, for the boosted gear. Said Akino sadly, so do you think that because of that, he can't admit his feelings to anyone, not even Rias? Asked Zenovia. Poor Issei Senpei, what have we done? Whimpered Gasper. At that moment a huge wave of power was felt, along with a pained and anguished roar. As that, Issei, oh no, quick, we need to go find him, shouted Akino, before they all ran to the sound of the voice. Line break. Rias was currently crying in a bathroom, her eyes puffy and swollen. Um Rias, are you okay? Asked Asia kindly, as she entered the bathroom and spotted Rias at the sinks. Sniff oh, I'm fine Asia. What are you doing here? Asked Rias. I came to check up on you, I mean, Issei isn't being very nice to you right now, which is unlike him. Said Asia timidly, sniff well, I don't know what to tell you Asia, I just can't get a straight answer from Issei. Said Rias sadly, I'm sure he loves you Rias, he would do anything for you. Said Asia comfortingly, as she walked over to Rias and patted her on the shoulder. I just don't know anymore, it was easy in the beginning. He was a blunt pervert who loved breasts and said mine were the best. He fought tooth and nail to save me from Riser and from any other threats. Said Rias fondly with a hiccup. I still remember when Issei first met me. He was so kind and honest, almost childlike. Said Asia with a smile. Yeah, I remember when he woke up next to me for the first time, he was so nervous. Commented Rias with a small smile. And I remember how he cried for me and called me his friend, even as I was dying in his arms, Issei wanted me to be happy. Said Asia. The two reminisced in their memories for a moment before Rias remembered something. Although, after you died, he was heartbroken. His power rose dramatically and he even took down that fallen angel all by himself, I was so proud of him. Said Rias. Yes, I heard that he defeated Rainier, all for my sake said asia fondly the two smiled at this before they both came to the same realization rainier they both cried before feeling an immense wave of power and a loud pained roar of anguish that actually shattered the mirrors in the girl's bathroom oh no quickly asia come stand next to me shouted rias to asia who obliged before a large red magic circle appeared under the two 
The two disappeared in a flash of red and appeared just outside the gates of the Hyodo household. The two ran up to the door before stopping at the doormat. Rhea slumped to her knees in shock, while Asia raised her hands to her face and stifled a gasp as she tried to hold back her tears. Moments later, everyone from the clubroom arrived as well and saw both Asia and Rhea crying. Akino looked to see what they were crying over, before she too, cried as well. The rest of the girls did the same in turn, with Gasper crying as well when he saw the doormat, while Kiba clenched his fist in anger. There, on the mat of the Hyodo household, along with Issei's keys, were eight pawn pieces. Chapter 2 The Truth Hurts But Big Brother, it's been almost a month now, cried Rias in annoyance. I'm sorry Rias, but no one can find Issei. He expelled his pieces and thus isn't astray, but for the same reason, we have no way of tracking him at all. There really isn't anything we can do, also, I know it isn't something you want to think about right now, but we have postponed the match with Sarawarb long enough. You'll have to face him this week, said Sirzex gravely. Well then, it's your lucky day, isn't it? Because I'm back, said a voice, before a golden glow shone in the room before Issei was revealed. Issei was clad in his school uniform, but he appeared noticeably buffer than before. His shirt and pants all strained against his body now, and his face had thinned slightly, giving his features a sharper look. I am possible, Issei, said Rias in shock. That's right, it is me, Rias, said Issei with a smile on his face. Rias smiled at this and went to run into Issei's arms, before she felt herself being held back. When she turned to yell at the person holding her back, she saw her brother, with an unusually stern expression. Yes, Rias, I'm back, not for you of course, I'm back for school, it has been a whole month after all and I can't fall behind in my studies. Said Issei mockingly, a smirk on his face. W what are you talking about Issei? questioned Rias in confusion. Rias, 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 said Issei, as he shook his head, causing everyone in the room to look at Issei warily. Ironically, everyone in the room right now, with the addition of Sirzex, were those who were there before Issei left. You really are a spoilt little princess, aren't you? questioned Issei, as a look of anger appeared on his face. W what do you mean? asked Rias, sounding a little hurt. I died, in your sick twisted schemes. You could have told me to stay away from Rainair, after all, even then, and until just recently, I would have done everything you said. I died and was brought back as a devil, just so you could get a strong piece, to get you out of your marriage to Riser. I nearly died doing it too. I didn't care though, I loved you after all, said Issei, getting Rias to smile in joy before she heard his words properly. Loved, asked Rias hesitantly. Yes, loved because now, I hate you Rias Gramori, snarled Issei, driving a stake right through Rias' heart and shocking everyone in the room. W-Y, what do you mean? Asked Rias tearfully. I did everything for you, I died for you and I risked life and limb for you. I followed you into hell literally and figuratively just because you cared for me, or so I thought. Said Issei sourly, but I do care for you Issei, I love you. Shouted Rias in tears. Do you now? Asked Issei, with a deadly flat tone. Yes, Issei, I love you with all my heart and soul, and want to spend the rest of our lives together. Cried Rias. Words, nothing but sweet words. The very same words, I would have died to hear from you just a month ago, but now, they mean absolutely nothing to me. Said Issei, getting Rias to gasp. You only ever thought about yourself. While I did my best to have you accept me and truth be told, you did to some extent, you never acted like a loved one. No, all this time, you used me as you saw fit. Then, and here comes the kicker, when you couldn't get one thing from me, one thing. Do you know what you did? Asked Issei rhetorically. You broke what was left of my heart. Said Issei in a cold tone, which sent shivers up the spine of everyone. I'm sorry Issei, cried Rias, 
openly weeping now. I didn't realize that Rainer had hurt you that badly. Continued Rias. I wonder why, said Issei coldly, getting Rias to stop crying momentarily. What do sniff you mean? Asked Rias in confusion. What I mean, is that you never cared about me. Shouted Issei, causing Rias to recoil. All this year, you've been using me, flaunting your red dragon emperor. Sure, I got strong under you, but what did you actually do? You might have been affectionate, physically with me, but, emotionally, they say no man is an island, but they must have never met you, Rias Grimori. Hissed Issei. You never acknowledged my emotions. You knew I loved you, yet, you toyed with me, do you know how much that hurt me? I couldn't think, I didn't know the truth, constantly asking myself, does she really love me, as a partner? Then, no matter how many separate occasions you had, to heal the nagging doubt in my heart and mind, what did you do? Of course, make it all about you. You, Rias Grimori, forget about Issei. Who cares if Issei has deeply seated emotional and trust issues, I just want him to say my name, because that means he loves me. Not like he hasn't proved it already, nearly dying for my sake. No, I need him to say my bloody name shouted Issei, turning Rias into a sobbing mess. Issei breathed in for a moment before resuming. In any case, I am done with you Rias Grimori, but let me fill you in on what happened to me a month ago. Said Issei calmly, getting everyone to look at him, even the sobbing Rias. You see, ejecting the evil pieces from my body, should have killed me. It was only thanks to Diedrag sustaining my life force that I managed to survive. You nearly, literally killed me, with your selfishness. Said Issei before pausing. But then, I saw an angel, once again, quite literally. Said Issei, getting a gasp from Irina. That's right Irina, I'm an angel now, just like you, well, maybe not just like you. Said Issei, before ten wings burst from his back. W what, ten wings already? B but the color said Irina in surprise. Yes, a little thanks to Deidre, my wings are now the same red of my balance breaker, although, you want to know the best part. Said Issei with a smirk. I can't fall ha 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 ha, laughed Issei, seeing the gobsmacked expressions on their face. No way, shouted Irina in surprise. It's true, I've even already lost my virginity since having them, and did it a few more times after that for good measure. I'll be an angel until the day I die. Said Issei, dropping numerous revelations. W what? Asked Rias in shock. Oh, but I do believe I've gotten off topic. Ah yes, Gabriel saving me. Said Issei with a nod. Well, as you might have guessed, it wasn't easy turning me. Diedreg comes at a hefty price, no matter what conversion system you use. Said Issei proudly. So, does that mean you are Gabriel's ace? Asked Irina curiously. Oh, heavens no, a simple ace would not be enough. Said Issei cheerfully. No way, you can't mean, said Irina before trailing off. At the end, that's right, along with Dulio, I'm the other joker. Confirmed Issei with a smirk. But you want to know the really good part, Rias. Said Issei, getting Rias to look at him attentively. When Gabriel found me, barely clinging to life, only inches away from death's door, do you know what she said to me? Asked Issei. Rias remained silent. These were her words exactly. I can see that your heart is in pain. You have suffered much and gained little. For this reason, I will give you a third chance at life. I won't ever turn on you, or ask you for more than you can give. Know that you have my love, forever and be strong. Become my joker, finished Issei, before glaring at Rias. A woman, no, a literal angel, did more for me in two minutes, than you've done for me, ever since I joined your little peerage. It must mean, that for someone who supposedly loves me, you have a terrible way of showing it. I suppose it is appropriate though, Gabriel is an angel and you are, in every sense of the word, a devil. Said Issei harshly. Rias couldn't take it anymore and fled, just like before.
Also, Sirzek, since you are here, I suppose you should know, the little ceremony with Satan Red, that's all over now. I want nothing to do with Rius. Also, you should know, that I've arranged for my Opai Dragon royalties to go to my own, personal bank account. Said Issei coolly, you know Issei, don't you think you were being a bit harsh? Rius explained what happened to me and while I can agree with you, that she didn't understand your feelings, isn't this a bit much? Questioned Sirzex. I suggest you wake up from your Siskon delusions and realize just how shallow of a person Rius is. Said Issei, getting Sirzex to frown. She complained how shallow Riser was, but she hurt me in ways you can't even imagine. Don't tell me this is too much, since I wanted to do a lot worse, but I promised Gabriel. Said Issei. Hum, Issei, are you sure you mean that? Asked Sirzex, as his lips thinned. Go on then, you don't like it. Kill me. I'm sure when the other Satans find out you killed the Red Dragon Emperor, an angel, and restarted the Great War, they will happily indulge you in all your Siskon delusions. Retorted Issei. You're playing a dangerous game here, Issei. Warned Sirzex. On the contrary, I'm done being played with. Replied Issei firmly. Sirzex didn't respond and merely disappeared back to the underworld, using a magic circle. Well, now that the main problem is out of the way, allow me to tell you what I think about all of you, for absolutely breaking me and pushing me to the point of no return. Said Issei. Issei we didn't know, said Akino, before Issei cut her off. I'll deal with you last, said Issei harshly, causing Akino to recoil. Firstly, Xenovia and Irina. Xenovia, you yourself said you were dense, I guess that was right, since you were so dense you didn't realize how much pain I was in. Irina, for a supposed angel and a supposed childhood friend, you suck at both roles. Said Issei harshly, causing them to look down in shame. That being said, since neither of you were here, when the event that scarred me for life took place, I can't be overly angry with you two. However, at this stage, I couldn't care less about either of you. Said Issei indifferently. Gasper, you are actually my second favorite person in this room right now. I could tell that you, even during the verbal assault I took, were hesitant to add to it, seeing that something was wrong with me. For that reason, I don't hate you, and do in fact acknowledge you, but you are a pretty bad friend. Said Issei sadly, which caused Gasper to look down. Ravel, honestly, I hold none of this against you at all. Said Issei, getting Ravel to look at him in. Surprise. You didn't say anything hurtful and even tried to apologize, for that, I am thankful and right now, you are the only one I see as a friend of mine in this room. Said Issei with a smile, before his face hardened. You though Asia, I am immensely annoyed with. Said Issei, getting the former nun to look at him in surprise. I fought tooth and nail to save you from Rainair. I cried in agony when you died. I attacked Rainair in fury for what happened to you and lastly, I begged Rius to save you, to give you a new life. You said I was your first friend, I wish I never was. The holy maiden who can heal all, even a devil, couldn't heal the pain in her supposed friend's heart and in fact, thinks her friend is horrible. Said Issei, getting Asia to cry in sadness. As for you three, said Issei looking at Akino, Kiba and Kaneko. Let's start with the littlest one first. Said Issei, as he faced Kaneko. You, who watched me from the shadows, from the beginning of it all. You, who fought with me in the church. You who claim to care for me. No, Kaneko, I'm not the worst. You are, said Issei in a flat tone. You know what the best part is though? Questioned Issei rhetorically, as Kaneko matched his gaze. In one month, I gained control over something that, to this day, terrifies you. Said Issei, getting Kaneko to look at him with fearful eyes. That's right, said Issei before gathering Senjutsu Chakra around him. Although, the best part, is who taught me, nay, Sharon. Said Issei, getting Kaneko to look at him in panic. That's right, you know who, 
she also took my virginity. She is one feisty cat, that Kuroka, said Issei, shocking many. Now do you, pretty boy, said Issei, glaring at Yuto. You can understand what the girls are going through, huh? Said Issei darkly. Issei, we didn't know, said Yuto weakly, before Issei cut him off. Bull, you of all people, someone who was damaged so badly as a kid, you couldn't see the pain I was going through. All you could see, was what that entitled little princess felt. Said Issei, getting Kiba to frown. Issei that isn't fair, said Yuto. Fair, he he because it was totally fair, for everyone to turn on me like that, huh? Questioned Issei, spitting out the word, fair, in anger, before turning to Akino. And now you, said Issei, to a slightly frightened Akino. You, someone who had problems with fallen angels your whole life, you couldn't see my pain, a pain, which I just recently helped you get through. Questioned Issei. I'm so sorry Issei, said Akino, tears beginning to form in her eyes. You know what I'm not sorry about? Asked Issei coldly. I'm not sorry at all, about the fact that I can't fall, because if I ended up becoming a fallen angel like you and that bitch Rainier, I might just kill myself. Said Issei darkly, Will you die for me? Issei snarled momentarily, before schooling his features. Well, in any case, that's all I had to say. Now, I think I will go to class, since I've missed so much already. Said Issei, before he left the clubroom, slamming the door behind him. What have we done? Questioned Akino sadly, as she wiped her tears. We pushed Issei over the edge it seems, it seems all of us turning on him, was too much for him. Said Yudo sadly, D do you think he will ever forgive us? Asked Asia, eyes swimming with tears. I don't think so, said Yudo grimly. Chapter 3 Genetics Kuroka was lazily swinging her legs, over the arm of a large, red grandfather chair, the rest of her, was curled up against the back of it. She was humming slightly, which caused Valley to look at her after a minute or two. You seem surprisingly cheerful, Kuroka. More than usual I mean, said Valley. N-Y-A. Oh, I guess that makes sense, I'm finally on track to achieving my goal, N-Y-A, said Kuroka playfully. Which goal, asked Valley, to bring back the Nekomata race of course, N-Y-A, said Kuroka cheerfully still swinging her legs in happiness. Really now, with who? Asked Valley, genuinely curious, since he knew Kuroka would only accept a strong mate. Hee hee, you're so funny Valley, you're opposite of course. Said Kuroka with a giggle. Hiodo, I didn't think he had it in him. Commented Valley with a raised eyebrow. Well, just recently, I had him in me, NYA. Heard Kuroka lustfully. Hum. I must say, I'm surprised, said Valley disinterestedly, NYA, you didn't even pick up on my hint at all, NYA, said Kuroka with a pout, what hint, asked Valley distractedly, when I said he was your opposite, I meant that in more ways than one, said Kuroka seriously, really, I know he has the red dragon, but how does that make him my opposite, in more ways than one, asked Valley, bringing his attention back to Kuroka. Just think about it Valley Lucifer, NYA. Teased Kuroka, stressing the word Lucifer. Valley paused for a moment and mulled this over, before looking at her with a raised eyebrow and a slightly disbelieving expression. You can't be serious, said Valley. NYA, he really is, an angel, said Kuroka dreamily. The energy coming off him was irresistible and the best part is, he was perfectly fine with me being a devil, as well as a stray, and gave me exactly what you won't, NYA. Said Kuroka happily, wouldn't an angel fall, having impure thoughts, not to mention, sex with a devil? Queried Valley in interest, well, as it turns out, he can't fall. I think we figured that out, the eighth time we did it, NYA. Said Kuroka thoughtfully, I see, how interesting said valley oh and not only that since we did it so much while i was at it 
I even restored the life force he lost, from when he went into Juggernaut Drive a while ago. Added Kuroka happily. Anything else? Asked Valley curiously. NYA. Well, I did teach him Senjutsu as well, and he picked it up, really, really, quickly. Especially, since every time he showed reasonable improvement, we did it again, NYA. Said Kuroka happily. Very interesting. Perhaps the next time we fight, he might even be able to beat me. Said Valley thoughtfully. Well, as long as he keeps beating me, with his not so little dragon afterwards, I don't mind. It will take a lot to get me pregnant outside of mating season, but, at the very least, I can get plenty of practice in. Heard Kuroka in anticipation. Line break. Gabriel, are you sure this was the right thing to do? Asked Michael, having just had a rather tense conversation with Sirzex. Of course Michael, replied the voluptuous, curly-haired blonde seraph, known as Gabriel. We couldn't just let the Red Dragon Emperor perish like that, and his heart was in so much pain. I had to help him. All he ever wanted, was someone's unconditional love, so I gave him mine. Said Gabriel pleasantly, well, you do have a point, losing Issei would have been disastrous, and the boy has a rather pure heart, whether that is for the best is debatable. Said Michael with a smile, which caused Gabriel to laugh. Well, I don't know about that, said Gabriel, before her beautiful, smiling visage, became uncharacteristically serious. The pain he was in, he was utterly heartbroken, like no one I have ever seen before. Michael, if you saw him now, on the surface, you would think he had only changed slightly, but, I spent days with him, helping him acknowledge his heart and just what people mean to him. It wasn't easy Michael. He was shattered and I barely managed to save him. Now though, he has changed, however, I do believe it is for the better, as now, he can open up to others once again. Said Gabriel with a frown, sounding somewhat sad. I see. I did not know that Issei was suffering so much. Said Michael. Yes, as it seems, no one did. Which is what pushed Issei to his breaking point. Said Gabriel sadly. Line break. Ah, it feels good Diedrig, I'm back and everything is better than ever. Thought Issei happily. I must say though, I've never heard of such a thing happening before. True, all my hosts had members of the opposite sex flock to them, I've just never seen my host turn so many away. Commented Diedrig. Eh, well, we already established I'm one of the strangest hosts you've ever had. Thought Issei. True. But with your natural lust and perversion, I never could have seen something like this happening, ever. Admitted Diedrake, will you die for me? Issei frowned slightly, before replying. People change Diedrake, even you, after so many years, have changed yourself. Thought Issei, before finally reaching his classroom. I'm back, shouted Issei, as he opened the door and walked into the room, causing everyone to gawk at him. H. Hyodo, where have you been for the past month? Questioned the teacher. She had an average appearance of average height, brown eyes, brown hair reaching down to her shoulder blades and a rather slim figure. I've been on a journey of self-discovery. Said Issei. Whoa, Hyodo got bigger. Commented one of the boys in Issei's class. I see, in any case, it is good to have you back, but can you please take your seat, so I may continue the lesson said the teacher sternly of course excuse my disrespect said issei as he gave a charming smile is that really hyodo asked one of the girls in the class as issei made his way to his seat the rest of the class proceeded without any fanfare save for the occasional student glancing back at issei after class finished and the teacher had left issei was quickly swarmed by motohama and matsuda where have you been Issei? Asked Motohama, as his glasses gleamed. Yeah, at first, we thought you were just stuck in your bed or something. Said Matsuda, getting looks of disgust, from some of the girls sitting nearby. That's disgusting, shouted Murayama. Quiet you, you don't understand the pleasures of flesh. Retorted Motohama, 
Ha ha. Oh, that's funny guys. Said Issei, getting the few people around him, namely Aikakuryu, Murayama and Kates, to look at him oddly, along with Matsuda and Motohama. What do you mean, Issei? We are brothers in the knowledge of flesh. Shouted Matsuda, his shiny bald head gleaming. Yeah, but have either of you actually had sex? Asked Issei bluntly, getting a small blush out of Murayama and Kates, while Kuryu looked on in interest, as the two perverts hung their heads momentarily. Hey, you haven't either, shouted the perverted duo, which only made Issei laugh. I wouldn't be so sure, teased Issei in a sing-song voice, getting those around him to gape. No way, Kyoto had sex, said Kates in disbelief. I wonder if that is why he got so buff, whispered Murayama. Ho, oh, big talk, but where is your proof? Asked Aikakuryu, as she looked at Issei with a grin, causing a few of their surrounding classmates to listen in on the conversation and turn to face Issei. Well, aside from the fact that I just did it before I came to school today and didn't have time to shower, so you can still practically smell her on me. Said Issei, getting the five of them to gape. Why don't I give you some physical evidence? Questioned Issei rhetorically, as he took off his blazer, revealing that his arms were straining at the fabric of his white dress shirt. Issei then took off his white dress shirt, leaving him only in his red t-shirt, revealing his arms to the classroom, which drew quite a few blushes from the girls, and a few looks of envy, mixed with grudging. Respect from the boys. Lastly, Issei turned around, so his back was facing everyone, before he took off his red shirt, getting a few gasps. Holy shit Issei, what happened to your back? Questioned Matsuda, for along Issei's back, were numerous angry red scratch marks. Like I said, physical evidence. She is a wild cat in bed and she can take one hell of a pounding. Said Issei, as he put his shirt back on, along with the rest of his clothes, the rest of the class still gaping from what he just said. No way, was Hyodo serious? Asked Murayama in a whisper. Hmm, they did look fairly genuine. Said Kuryu, commenting on the marks they just saw on his back. Lies, Issei. There is no way that is the truth. Tell us this is all a sick joke. Cried Motohama indignantly. Nope. Besides, this wasn't the first time we did it and it won't be the last. Said Issei casually. How? Who? Why? Shouted Matsuda. Hum. How? Well you saw for yourself how the girls in this class reacted to my body and you guys know that despite my perverseness, I'm not that bad of a guy. I'd do anything for my friends said Issei with a frown, as he recalled an image, which was appearing more and more frequently in his mind. Will you die for me? As for who, I'll leave that until the end. The why though, is because I have superior genetics, said Issei before going silent. Well, who is it? Asked Motohama, both in excitement and envy. Kuroka, said Issei simply, that doesn't tell us anything, shouted the perverted duo. Oh, right, did I forget to mention that Kuroka is Kaneko's big sister. Also, when I say big, I'm not just talking about her age in comparison to Kaneko. Said Issei, getting jaws to drop throughout the classroom. No way, said Matsuda in shock. Kaneko has a big sister. Continued Motohama. Yep, although, they aren't on the best of terms, oh, and I'll say this now. She's mine so don't even think about it. Said Issei, I can't believe, Hyodo, had sex with someone, him, said Murayama. Well, if you want, I could show you what it's like. Teased Issei with a grin, getting Murayama to blush and splutter refusals. Oh, that's too bad. If Kuroka is to be believed, I'm apparently very good at it. I mean, just ask everyone who heard us near the edge of town this morning. Said Issei, getting wide-eyed looks from everyone. Issei smirked at this, before he felt someone looking at his crotch, and looked to where he felt the gaze coming from, only to see Kuryu gazing at it with a blush. Impressive, isn't it? Asked Issei, 
getting Kiryu to nervously chuckle and look away. Well, you're not short of power, that's for sure. Said Kiryu perversely, getting Murayama, Kates, Motohama and Matsuda to look at him in shock. Like I said, superior genetics, in more ways than one. Said Issei with a smirk, which caused Murayama and Kates to blush slightly at the implication, while Matsuda and Motohama hung their heads in shame and envy. Chapter 4 Responsibility Issei was walking home after the school day. Not the Hyodo residence, which had been taken over by the members of the occult research club, but rather, his apartment. Yes, his apartment, not a single room, but a whole apartment that he had purchased, with assistance from Kuroka. It seemed being bad, really did pay well. It wasn't particularly large, but it wasn't small either. Three separate floors, with two rooms on each level. Each room about the size of a small, one-bedroom house, complete with kitchen and bathroom. Issei climbed the stairs to his room, which was the room on the right, on the third floor. Issei pulled out his key and opened the door and saw, perhaps the one person, he was most conflicted about, sitting on his couch by the small coffee table. Yo, Issei, said Azazel, the leader of the fallen angels. Issei frowned slightly, before entering his room and closing the door behind him. What are you doing here, Azazel? asked Issei in a clipped tone. Ho, oh, such an interesting response. I was expecting you to sling curses at me. Confessed Azazel honestly with a smirk. You are, perhaps, the only person I've yet to make my mind up about. Replied Issei, as he walked to the small kitchen and filled up a glass with water, which he briefly sipped at. Oh, and why is that? Asked Azazel curiously. You have helped me a great deal. It is thanks to your help that I have actually managed to become stronger as a person. Even your perverted input was, interesting at times, you weren't wrong about Gabriel. Said Issei, as he placed his cup down on the kitchen counter, while Azazel merely looked up at him in interest from his place on the couch. Yes, I heard you had been reincarnated by Gabriel. As interested as I am by how that was possible, I'm rather envious at the relationship you have with her now. I would honestly give my other arm for a chance like that. Said Azazel jovially. Yes, that aside though, said Issei, before he heard that same voice in his head again. Will you die for me? On some level, I loathe you. Said Issei, as he picked up his glass, down the rest of his water, and walked over to Azazel, staring at him from across the coffee table. Hum, that is what I was expecting from you to be honest. Said Azazel with a nod. I respect you, as a sensei, as someone who is knowledgeable on sacred gears, as a strong fighter, but, you are a really shitty leader. One who can't keep his subordinates in line, Kokobil for example. Said Issei bluntly, is it really Kokobil that you are annoyed with, Issei? Said Azazel seriously, will you die for me? Issei snarled, clenching his fist in annoyance. Number, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Said Issei, anger seeping into his tone. Oh, and who would that be? Asked Azazel calmly. Don't fuck with me Azazel. You let that bitch Rainer roam free and I suffered for it. Shouted Issei, his temper snapping at Azazel's calm questioning. Well, I suppose that is true. Although, you did have ample opportunity to confront me about it. Said Azazel, still in that annoyingly calm tone. Yeah. Like when I confronted you about it at the meeting between the devils, angels and fallen angels. That went well didn't it? Asked Issei sarcastically. Well, the situation was different then. Things were too serious then. I couldn't indulge your whims at the time. Replied Azazel in an even tone. Issei glared at Azazel, but didn't say anything. You know, they, and I'm sure you know who, are facing Saraorg and his peerage tomorrow said Azazel, changing the topic. HMPH asterisk like I care. Huffed Issei. They most likely will be defeated without you. Not just because of your strength, but also because of the strength you give them. Pointed out Azazel honestly. Well, if that was the case, 
Then they should have cared more about my feelings, if I was as important to them as you say. Retorted Issei unhappily, I won't say they are innocent in the matter, a maiden's heart may be complicated, but a man's heart is fragile, no matter what the media might say these days. Said Azazel, Issei hummed at this, but didn't respond. Although, don't you think you are being a little unfair with them? Asked Azazel, funny, Sears X asked me almost the same thing, come to think of it, I bet he no doubt contacted you and Michael, after I confronted him and, them. Said Issei calmly, he did, confirmed Azazel, in that case, I shouldn't need to repeat myself, but I will, just in case you missed the memo. Said Issei, briefly pausing, I wanted to do much worse, but promised Gabriel, otherwise, and also, I'm doing being played with, that goes for you too Azazel. Said Issei firmly, ah, I see, I guess you were serious about that then, very well, as a man, a fallen angel, and, let's be honest here, the reason you are so angry. Said Azazel, getting Issei to narrow his eyes at him. What? Asked Issei. I apologize for my subordinate's actions and for the pain it caused you. Said Azazel, as he stood and gave Issei a small bow, before heading for the door. Just before Azazel had reached the door, Issei spoke to him. I'll be honest here, I acknowledge your apology, but I don't accept it. Said Issei, getting Azazel to turn his body, to face him again. Also, I should point out, that despite it being your fault it was there to begin with, if they, had cared about me and understood the pain in my heart, we wouldn't be in this situation right now and they wouldn't be heading to their imminent defeat, at the hands of Sarawarg and his peerage. Continued Issei. Azazel gave a stiff nod and made to turn around, before Issei said one last thing. And just for your personal amusement, I've already had sex on that couch four times. Said Issei, pointing to the couch Azazel had just been sitting on. Azazel laughed uproariously before turning to the door and opening it. Well, at least you haven't changed completely. Laughed Azazel, as he gave one last look to Issei. No, but I have changed a lot, said Issei with a smirk, as his ten red angel wings, burst from his back. I see, in any case, I'll let them know, you might be surprised though, at what they do now. Said Azazel, before leaving, closing the door behind him. Like I care what they do anymore, thought Issei with a frown. Will you die for me? Issei growled, before deciding to go take a shower. Man I hate that bitch thought Issei angrily, as his mind was still plagued, by a certain fallen angel. Line break, hum, that is rather interesting Ravel, said Lady Phoenix, a mirror image of her daughter, Ravel, in her twenties, the only exception, being her hair, which was done up with ornate hair decorations. I don't follow mother, said Ravel in confusion, well, from the sounds of things, not only has he cut all ties with the Grimori princess, but, he in fact holds no ill will towards you. There could not be a better outcome, said Ravel's mother. Be but mother, how can you say that? Asked Ravel in shock. Do you not remember what happened with your brother? Questioned Lady Phoenix. Ravel frowned slightly, remembering the spectacle that was the failed marriage between Riser Phoenix and Rias Grimori. While there was nothing we could do, since Riser accepted the challenge, it doesn't mean we were happy with it. Sears X might as well have cornered Riser into doing it, as, due to Riser's pride, he fell for it easily and we lost the marriage. Continued Lady Phoenix. However, now, we might gain something even better. Said Lady Phoenix, getting Ravel to look at her curiously. An angel, one who cannot fall, add to the fact, that he is the holder of the boosted gear, well, that is quite a rare specimen, any way you look at it. Said Lady Phoenix thoughtfully, I realize that, but considering the situation with President Rius, said Ravel uncertainly, come now, Ravel, you know what we are, we are devils, it is in our nature to be selfish, besides, it was not us who caused the problem, from what you said, this has been the case even before the Grimori battled with Riser. 
The fact that the Grimori couldn't see the pain her pawn was in, is in no way our fault. The blame is solely hers to bear, said Lady Phoenix. I suppose that is true, nevertheless, I feel somewhat guilty. Confessed Ravel, as she looked down. My dear, I'm not saying you must do anything right. Now, all I am saying, is that you should act as you would have prior to this incident. You don't need to feel guilty, for something you did not do. Said Lady Phoenix kindly. He did say he doesn't hold any of it against me. Agreed Ravel. Indeed, and he even considers you his friend still, you are fortunate. Said Lady Phoenix, before sighing, upon seeing Ravel's still unsure expression. Listen to me Ravel, said Lady Phoenix kindly, getting Ravel to look at her again. I may sound selfish here, but I only want what is best for my children. No matter what has happened to him, I can still see that you care deeply for the Red Dragon, or rather, Issei Hiodo. Whether he was a devil and part of Rias Grimori's peerage, or whether he is now an angel, nothing has changed for you. I don't want you to have any regrets and if you really love Hiodo, you should continue to pursue him, if that is what you want. While it is all well and good to be considerate of others, you should not do so at the expense of your own feelings. Said Lady Phoenix kindly. Ravel nodded at this with a smile. I understand mother, and thank you. Said Ravel. What are mothers for? Questioned Lady Phoenix, with a smile of her own. Line break. Issei walked to school the next day. Thanks to Azazel, he knew that the occult research club would not be at school today, which he was somewhat relieved about. The day started off normal enough, but after lunch, Saji was sent to pick up Issei, as Sona wanted to talk with him. As the two walked, Saji observed Issei for a while, noticing that not only his appearance, but even his mannerisms had changed quite a deal. Even simple things, like the way he walked and the way he held himself had changed. So, is there a reason Sona wants to see me? Asked Issei curiously. She wouldn't say, only that there is something she wants you to see. Replied Saji. There was a lull once again, before it was broken by Saji, as they neared Sona's office. Why did you do it? Asked Saji curiously. That's a pretty vague question. Said Issei getting Saji to frown slightly. All right, just a joke, I know what you are talking about, no need to get all moody. Said Issei with a small chuckle, before turning serious. Tell me, Saji, if Sona turned on you, would you still care about her? Asked Issei. What do you mean, why would Sona turn on me? Asked Saji genuinely confused, as the two stopped just outside Sona's office. If Sona betrayed you, would you still care for her? Could you still proclaim you love her, if she broke your heart? Asked Issei with a frown. Saji didn't respond, and merely looked at Issei strangely. If the rest of her peerage turned on you, if nearly everyone you thought was your friend, turned on you, could you look at them the same way? Asked Issei again. What do you mean? How did they turn on you? Asked Saji in confusion. Answer this for me, Saji. If you risked your life for someone, put your body through hell for someone, endured endless suffering for someone, just so that someone could be happy, would you consider that proof of one's love? Asked Issei. Saji blinked at this, before responding as Issei expected him to. Yeah, I suppose, said Saji with a small shrug. Well, apparently, that wasn't enough for Rias Grimori, who seemed to think that everything I did for her wasn't enough to show that I loved her. Said Issei, before opening the door to Sona's office. Sona stared at Issei with a frown, but also possessed a hint of surprise in her eyes. Hum, based on that look, I take it you must have overheard what I just said to Saji. Concluded Issei. I did, replied Sona curtly. Do you disagree? Asked Issei. Sona stared at Issei for a few seconds, before shaking her head. No, I suppose you do have a point. Rias is my friend and I want the best for her, but even I can't deny that she made a mistake here. Said Sona coldly. Well, in any case, what is it that you wanted? Asked Issei after a moment. 
Although you are no longer a part of her peerage, I believe that you should at least watch her match with Cyroorg," said Sona, as a small screen dropped down behind her. Issei blinked at this, before sitting down in the seat opposite Sona and settled himself in, to watch Cyroorg's peerage and Rhea's peerage battle for supremacy. That's all for now till next time.